our discussion today is on neat mds exam and pertaining to the oral and maxillofacial surgical or the omfs uh, questions which has been asked so i'm not covering ini cet pattern now i'm just talking about uh, how the neat mds pattern were for the last 3 years and uh, at the end we will discuss few questions and i would like to uh, you know explain how uh, how easy actually it is to study omfs and uh, how to you know analyze the questions and how to come to a conclusion whether this is the answer or that is the answer so we will just talk about all those things so what is there in today's session key topics which has been covered in recent exams or which has come in the recent exams so we should always know the recent trends there is no point studying the all india and questions of 2000 99 98 and all it is not asked at all nowadays so there is no point in reading all stuff old stuff so you should be updated about what happened last okay without knowing what last three years there is no point in studying throughout you know uh, the whole textbook or the whole uh, syllabus won't help you unless you have focused on the key areas or the key topics uh, in the recent uh, papers okay so i will also tell you or i'll just give you a tip on how to read or study for omfs and uh, some few recent questions some three or four questions i'll discussing okay so that will be the that will be today's session so it will be a very short one so regarding key topics what do you mean by key topics so entire syllabus is there in front of you okay so there is a, a syllabus copy which you can download from the dci website and uh, your respective university which your university you have studied uh, may it be rajiv gandhi university of health science maharashtra university of health science kerala university any any particular university has a different set of uh, syllabus copy but then the neat exam comes from the dental council of india syllabus copy it is available in the dci website for download so that is the topic or that is the entire syllabus now what did i what do i what do you mean by key topics so the key topics are the recent areas from where the 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 recently picked questions or uh three four years papers uh, what all questions they have or what are the areas from where they asked okay that is very important because you need to emphasize more on these things okay i'm not telling that the questions for the next year will come from only these topics but i'm telling you to emphasize on these topics first then move on to the other topics okay so what are these topics what all things had come cleft lip and palate yes there are many questions which have come from uh cleft lip and palate so it has come from its anatomy uh, it has come from it is uh, its epidemiology the treatment aspect has been asked so the cleft lip and palate has been you know popping up in recent uh, papers trauma and in trauma they have asked about orbital floor reconstruction some incisions uh, like canthal uh, incision so they have they have gone a bit depth and mandibular fracture uh, always they ask about mandibular fracture they also asked about the plating systems in mandibular fracture so trauma is a favorite part it has been a favorite part in previous uh, all india pattern exams also and in neat also so trauma comes and uh, sometimes it comes a bit more than what is required for a bds level so then the most important one and the neglected part is the minor oral surgery there has been lot of questions from minor oral surgery including the injection techniques even this year also injection technique has come uh, the sutures last year there was a lot of questions from sutures medically compromised patients lot of questions on a management of medically compromised patients i think in 2018 there were 3 or 4 questions in topic imagine You have left that topic, or you have not. Uh, your orthopedic surgery. Few questions have come. That also is a part of minor oral surgery. So that is a very key part. Never miss questions from minor oral surgery, and most of the questions are the ones which we or are uh, regarding the one which we. Uh, so keep in mind it's very important and recent trend this is uh, we are not very sure whether it's coming from the oral surgery side or from the prosthodontic side but implants 
has been asked in recent days and there are a lot of uh, picture based questions also so being key so, so it is a cool question from prosto these were the key topics in last 3 years so these last 3 years topics uh, you should read first okay you should read first and then you should move on to the rest of the syllabus okay your surgeries which you might not have seen that might be um, you know um, the trauma cases some of the trauma cases are uh, like the the questions they have asked are of you know pg uh, pg standards and all so there are a lot of thing to study in oral surgery so how to read or how to study so what is, collect the previous questions first and find out the areas just like how i described the key topics find the key topics and read those key topics uh, you know the, the reading it should not be like how you read for your descriptive pattern exam find out points just the points which can or which they can ask as a question and memorize those and make a small note for all those things okay don't don't you know spent hours and hours digging in big big textbooks instead spend you know quality time uh, reading the old question papers and find out relevant topics uh, or read relevant topics uh, which you feel that you are not very good at or which you feel that uh, i don't know anything about this particular topic those topics you can just refer some textbooks um, which you feel uh, it is easier for you to you know understand the topics rather than you know mugging up uh, all the stuff you can have a slight bit of understanding that will make the things easier for you so don't start with textbooks that's the common mistakes you make whether for oral surgery anatomy or anything don't never start with textbooks start with previous questions first then you can choose whether you have to read a textbook or for this particular topic you like each and every other time when you're revising or then search for the topics which you want to actually read and then read only those particular key topics or particular topics which you actually don't have any idea about okay so as far as possible stick on to the previous years question papers and what stuff they have asked okay after you have you know completely done with the previous years papers and all you are good with it you can spend some uh, two or three days time reading the textbooks and all uh, noting down so few extra points and uh, reading textbooks is very uh, helpful when it comes for your pictures because the the pictures are directly picked from some textbooks so but uh, otherwise uh, i would never tell you to start reading uh, the textbooks first okay so stay focused with what kind of questions has been asked then you check in the textbook for similar patterns or similar uh, area the uh, similar pattern questions can, can be or may be asked okay so that's how you do it for any subject so surgery also you do like that okay and uh, some um, instruments and all if you don't understand what the instrument is try to search for a picture or try to search for uh, some um, clinical uh, clinically relevant things which will have help you to understand how this particular instrument works because those things if you see once it will stay in your mind and study i'll i'll just show you one of few questions which has asked in recent days and i'll tell you how to uh, read and how to relate to that okay in this year's question this year's paper 
identify the instrument in implant kit. Okay. So this was the question they had asked. So when the such question comes, you don't just you know by heart what this picture is. Uh, uh, if they have they have tilted the picture or if they have you know uh, rotated the picture, then you will get confused. Next time the question comes with the picture which is rotated, they, you will get confused. So don't buy hard the pictures. Rather, I'll show you the area. You should be able to identify and know what all other stuff is related to this particular instrument or this particular area. So this is a picture in which uh, there's an implant. Obviously, there's an implant in the patient's mouth and onto which some attachments have been kept. Okay. So think what it can be. So it can be, uh, it, can it be an uh, attachment to which the crown sits? Can it be? Anyone? Can you uh, message in the answer in the chat box? What do you think? What kind of stuff is it? So something is extra onto the uh, implant which is lying inside the uh, bone. Anyone? Any guesses what this can be? You can type in the chat box. Okay, I'll, I'll just explain it to you. I think uh, uh, the problem is that because this is a um, this is a part implant is a part which is uh, not uh, you know you might not have the clinical exposure or you have seen this or you might actually have not uh, read about it because it is not very relevant or important. Uh, in case of your uh, normal BDS curriculum. So I'll just uh, draw and explain few stuff from this. So suppose this is a bone block. Okay. So what do we do? We place an implant. Okay. What we do is I'm just showing you. I, I have drilled a hole like this. will be something like this, isn't it? So the implant is within the bone. This is the first phase. Next, what I do is I cover the gingiva. I put uh, two sutures. I put two sutures here and there, and then I send the patient. So this is what we do in the first setting of implantology. You drill a hole, so it is called osteotomy. So you uh, do the osteotomy and then you implant in. Okay. Next, what do you do? The patient comes back to you after three to six months, depending on what kind of bone. So Based on healing, we plan for a. There will be a small screw, a screw which has which will go inside like this. So there is a cover screw there. And uh, next, what you are doing is when he or she comes after three or four months or six months, whichever time period you have planned, you will remove the gums. You will open it. Then this uh, particular screw here, this particular screw here, you will unwind and remove it. So I am removing the screw. So it has been six months. And now what I do is I place some called cap. So healing cap is like bigger screw which goes into this. You can tighten it. And what does the healing cap do? The cap will allow the gums to heal. So the gums will be around the healing cap like this. So gums will heal 
uh, and it will heal in such a way that uh, the, the, it, it helps in forming the emergence of the crown which we are going to place later. So this is what is healing cap. So told healing cap. So healing cap is a very small thing. It will be slightly above the gums. So somewhere of this height. Just have a look at this picture. Somewhere of this height only the healing cap will come. Okay, very small one. So it will it will be something like this projecting out, so that the shape of that gums is maintained. Okay, so that is something called as healing cap. Now after healing cap, what we have to do is some 10 to 20 days or 10 to 15 days, uh, the healing cap is placed. The gingiva is round or contoured now. Properly. Then we will do what we will do is we will take a impression or we will make an impression of that particular area. So what we do is we place something like this. Two posts, you remove the healing cap and you place uh, this is the, there are two implants in this particular picture. So uh, I have placed or I have shown the picture with two uh, impression posts. Okay. So what I have shown in this picture is, in, is impression post. So how does it work? When you are uh, taking an impression, this is getting transferred in the impression. you can place an abutment and then you can fabricate the crown as uh, you normally fabricate for any uh, uh, normal crown preparation or no normal uh, crown uh, similar way this abutment uh, they can use in the lab and they can mill the abutment shape it and uh, onto the this this is got it this is your healing cap from, from healing cap. You move on to, you remove the healing cap, place the impression post, uh, then or impression post, or it is also called as the transfer copings. And then you can uh, make an implant analog. So this represents an implant or this, this is going to replicate your implant. So, uh, your laboratory works is carried out. So you have an abutment fixed onto it and then onto it the crown. So these are the various other associated picture based questions which they can ask. So you club and you take everything together, understand the concept, then you can try to solve the new question. Implant is an area where you have no idea. So try to collect the idea and uh, you know, when you go through the pictures and when you understand that, okay, these, these stuff are these, uh, it is easier for you to answer these questions. So I'll just show you the answer. It is torque wrench racket. Now, I didn't tell you what is torque wrench yet. So what is torque wrench? So it carries a driver and the implant is driven inside using the torque wrench. So what do you mean by driven inside? So when I draw the picture, I told you that into the bone, we do an osteotomy and in which the implant is kept. So you have to drive it in. You have to drive it in. So you have a driver here. You can use your finger. Initially, you can use your finger, but once it gets more tight or more resistance is felt, you can use this thing. It is a wrencher. So it, it helps you to, you know, you can wrench or you can uh, drive it inside with the help of this wrencher. Now, what, why is it called torque wrench racket? Now the torque wrench means you can set the torque. If you can uh, see in this picture, 0, 15, 25, 35, 50 and all. So what is meant, what is it meant or what does it mean? So it means that you can see how much Newton of force you are applying. So torque wrench helps you to identify how much of force you are uh, using or how much of torque you are using to drive the implant inside. So that is a talk wrench racket. So what I'm conveying you or what I'm telling you is you get this question. 
you should uh, always you know study few things which is related to this particular question also then only this question also will remain in your mind okay don't just mug up this question and move on study some key topics related to it and when you have an exam which is coming after 11 months you have got time for doing this when you are doing a crash batch you have only 4 or 5 months you cannot do all these things you have to just mug up and you have to study whatever extra two or three points which you get from some mcq text guide guides or some materials from entrance coaching centers and all but right now you have plenty of time you can research and you can find out few pictures from uh, whichever uh, textbook or whichever um, a, a, you know the 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 simplest book don't go for a big uh, book and all try to collect data from the simplest book and uh, that should help you to retain or remember whatever you have uh, studied okay only studying that particular question won't help you to uh, recollect it okay so you have to read few topics regarding this okay so we just discuss about impression pose we did talk about healing abutment and now this picture shows the the picture here shows the implant analog within the uh, cast which has pore and this is the uh, implant this is the abutment and on to which the crown is there okay so all these things we have just discussed so this is how the talk crunch actually works so there is an implant supposedly it's somewhere here it is inside the bone and we are driving it inside okay so clear so this is how you should be studying this particular question now we shall the second question okay so i am not here to teach you more questions i am just uh, here to you know teach you that learning method of these questions and this this also was asked in the recent paper recent paper means the paper which was there 15 to 20 uh, 16 days back okay that was on december 16th we had a exam so this is from the, those paper the previous question also is from that paper only so here they have asked cleft lip occurs due to the failure of fusion between okay you know what is maxillary process what is mandibular process what is maxillary process what is median nasal process maxillary process what is lateral nasal process we should know all these things only then you can answer okay so i'll just tell you or i'll just teach you how the uh, formation of uh, face takes place so we have a suppose this is a this is a face suppose this are the ears so this are the eyes okay and you have a lip isn't it okay this is just a diagram for representation so this is the face now what happens during the development of face so you you have a so you have a nose which is which is like this and uh, now what happens is there are many processes uh, which you know together helps in forming the face so it takes place the development takes place around 4 weeks to 6 weeks of intrauterine life and uh, the face the palate all those things you know simultaneously it is being formed so what happens is there is something called as fronto nasal process so the fronto nasal process is the prominent uh, process uh, from the uh, cranial end uh, which comes down and the the, the, the part which forms the uh, you know frontal uh, region of your face and all is uh, developed from fronto nasal process so as the name says uh, it is fronto nasal process so what is this nasal process got uh, got to do here so the fronto nasal process divides into the median nasal process and the lateral nasal process so the green colored ones which i have shown is the lateral nasal part which is derived from the lateral nasal process and the central um, slightly yellowish colored one is der derived from the uh, median nasal process okay so understand the thing you have the fronto nasal process which divides further into the median nasal process 
and the lateral nasal process. Clear? So you have a median nasal process, which I marked as yellow in color. So the area which comes in that yellow color is the area uh, which is derived from the median nasal process. So that includes the middle part of the nose and also very important, the philtrum of lip and the part of upper lip. Okay. So that is one thing you should know. Another thing which you should know is the maxilla. The maxilla is similarly, the maxilla is uh, developing from a process known as maxillary process. So what is this maxillary process? This maxillary process is part of the first brachial arch. What is the first brachial arch? The first brachial arch, uh, there are pharyngeal arches, first, second, third, fourth, out of which the first brachial arch, it divides into the maxillary process and mandibular process. So mandibular process is the process uh, which I have marked with this dot, which uh, forms the lower, uh, the skin over the lower part and the lower lip. So this lower lip and all from the maxillary, sorry, mandibular uh, process. So whereas the, the upper lip and the cheek on both sides, it is derived from the, this much of area, it is derived from the maxillary process. So uh, now we have just talked about some processes other than the median nasal and lateral nasal process. What are those? One is the maxillary process that is in pink color. So you have a maxillary process which is in pink color and the mandibular process process which I have marked as the uh, black dots. So the area in this particular region is developing from these particular processes. So this is how the face develops in brief. So you have the front nasal process, which divides into median nasal process and the lateral nasal process. Now, what is the question which is asked? Cleft lip is due to failure of which particular processes? So can any of you tell me? So can any of you tell me what is the question? The failure of fusion of which processes can can lead to or it may lead to the yes uh, dr sara maxillary process and median nasal process so you are right so others are you listening so what actually happens is this particular area i'll just um I just mark in a brown color so that it, there's a contrast. So this is your cleft lip, isn't it? So the brown colored part is your cleft lip. So it is actually, this is your cleft lip. It is actually uh, the medial nasal process and maxillary process. So this should be clear for everyone. Now we will move to some other question. Suppose, okay, suppose, I'm putting contrasting color again. Suppose there is a, suppose there is a fusion, failure, failure of fusion in this region. Which particular processes are involved? Can you just comment in the chat box? Maxillary and lateral process. Yes, you're right, Gayatri. So what kind of cleft is it called? What kind of cleft? Is it called anyone? Do you do you know what kind of cleft is it? So it is called as a oblique facial cleft. So the blue colored one is called as the oblique facial cleft. Got it? So what happens here is there is a cleft which lies along the uh, lateral border of your uh, nose. Okay. So that is another type of cleft. And another question they may ask you is regarding transverse facial cleft. 
Now, what is transverse facial cleft? Anybody knows that? Sometimes what can happen is, yes, you're right, Adra. Sometimes what can happen is the maxillary and the mandibular processes, okay? The maxillary and mandibular processes might fail to fuse in one side. So what, what it can lead to is there can be an extended cleft in this region. So the lip, uh, might there might be a cleft towards one side. So that is known as transverse facial cleft. So we studied about three things. So first one is, first one is regarding the normal facial cleft where the maxillary and the median nasal process is not fusing. So second one is the oblique facial cleft in which the lateral and the maxillary process is not fused. Third one is the transverse facial cleft in which you have the maxillary and mandibular process which has failed to fuse okay so that i hope is clear to all i shall move to the slide so this is in brief uh, the just have a look okay just have a look this is from 5 weeks onwards before 5 week it, itself the uh, journey or the face development so uh, just follow the spotlight here. So this is the frontal nasal prominence. See how the median nasal and lateral nasal process are, you know, separated, and it is in the other uh, two. I mean, it is it is in the opposite uh, sides. And later the 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 frontal nasal prominence in between this lateral and median nasal process it's going to shrink in size, and this will come. And finally, this median nasal process is going to unite, and finally it is going to become like this, the filter is formed from the median nasal process, then the lateral nasal process is on the sides and the maxillary process is here. Okay, so I hope that's clear. So we have the answer also here. I think most of you have already understood which was the answer. So maxillary process and median nasal process. So next, how to study from the options or how to, you know, you know, when you are revising or when you are reading again or you know uh, when you want to study this so you should uh, you know check all the options the first option what will be the answer for first option maxillary process with mandibular process if there is a failure of fusion can you please comment in the chat box what will be the answer for a or rather what will be the question what happens? Yes, yes, exactly. Transverse facial cleft. Very good. Now, what about the option C? You can tell me the answer. Option C. What kind of cleft? Actively? Oblique facial cleft. Very good. Now, option D, um, it's very rare, um, the, but still there can be a, you know, there can be a notching in the uh, nose. So, uh, at least when you read the options, now you can what it actually means. So that's how you should uh, read and study. Okay. Don't just mug up the answer and go. Again, a question in this year's paper, it is uh, coming from the same region, cleft lip and palate. Okay. pre maxilla is found from, and this, this can be also a question which has been asked from the embryology part also. Okay. So what is pre maxilla? I'll just show you, Mark and show you what is pre maxilla. Just uh, very easy to understand once you have read the uh, previous topic. So this region of maxilla, this region of maxilla is developed from which process? That's what they are asking. This region is known as the pre-maxilla. Okay. Will... Somewhat th like this. Yes. Uh, Shubham, there is nothing like median and lateral nasal process. If at all it happens, it may lead to a nasal notching. Okay, so that is that is not a relevant uh, question. So other three options are very relevant, but I'm just telling you, if at all there is a median and lateral nasal process failure, it's going to give a notching in nose. So there is no question which has asked like that. There is no nowhere in the theory which they talk about notching also. Uh, at least in uh, our textbooks. So I'm, I was just telling you, if an option comes like that, you, that is how you should think about it, okay? When you get a picture of it, how the development takes place, 
Now you can imagine on your own, okay, maybe the nasal process is this re region, lateral is in the other. The, the, if there is a failure, there should be a notch in somewhere here, okay? So there is no question asked like that, okay? So coming back to this one. So the area marked under red is the area which is developed from your median nasal process itself, okay? So the median nasal process uh, along with, you know, the median nasal process is going to, uh, uh, what do you say, give rise to the filtrum of uh, lip in over here and inside it is going to form the premaxilla. So what was the question here? The question here was, premaxilla is formed from, so premaxilla is formed from median nasal process, okay? So now we have studied, uh, you know, connecting to our previous question, we, uh, to, uh, uh, you know, you have added one more point to it. You have added that the premaxilla also is derived from the median nasal process. Apart from the central part of nose and the filtrum and the upper, part, upper lip, the median nasal process also gives rise to the anterior segment or the canine to canine region of your maxilla. Okay. So, and along with, the, with this kind of question, uh, you should revise uh, the other areas uh, which are developing from, uh, you know, uh, this is this is a premaxillary region. Sorry. So, this is your premaxillary region. Now, it leaves us with uh, two palatal shelves. So this is one palatal shelf and this is the second palatal shelf. So this is derived from the maxillary process from both sides and it fuses in the center. So uh, if you want to really connect and study, you should uh, you know study this along with the development of uh, palate also. Okay. So that's a way to uh, you know connect things and study. You should also connect this to the previous question which we which we which we just uh, just. Uh, discussed. So there were two questions regarding the development of cleft lip and palate and the development of, uh, you know, uh, uh, or particularly the embryology part of cleft lip and palate. There were two questions last time. Okay. So never neglect the basics. So this, the premaxilla uh, will be developed from the median acid process. So it is nothing. This area, this area in the front, so those who didn't understand this area in the front, uh, uh, which I have marked within this red color, is called as the premaxilla. In and in development of face, this premaxillary part is developed from is originating from the median nasal process. So M N P gives rise to this simple thing. And what about the rest of the palate? So you have a palatal shelf which comes from this side. You have a palatal shelf which comes from this side. So this is your palatal shelf. So this is your palatal shelf. So this comes from max maxillary process. Okay. So both sides, the, the maxillary process is going to the maxillary process is going to come from sides and it is going to unite in the central sutural region. So this is the central sutural region. So uh, this is uh, the development of palate. Okay, I'm, I didn't I want to go into detail of the development of palate. That's why I was just, uh, I was not trying to teach you stuff here. I was trying to tell you how you should be connecting things. Okay, how you should be connect. Uh, same question or similar question, which has asked, which has been asked from the uh, similar part. Okay. So I was just trying to convey that, okay? We, we can discuss the development of palate later on. So, but here, just know that median nasal process, we had already studied in the pre previous uh, question. And, and there is also a question which I Now, coming to the this question, very clinically relevant question, which was asked in this year. So I think one, one more last question, which I would like to discuss. No, no, again, my point is 
uh, when you're having a question regarding the local technique, you should also know about other local anesthetic techniques. And it, it should not be like um, how we study for our regular exam or regular descriptive pattern. You, you should look for, for particular area from where they copy what they have read on they cannot correlate so we would have read that gau gates is in injection it is given in, in uh, near to the uh, condyle or you know something related to the condyle so all those things we might have read but when the picture is shown they will not be able to even understand whether it's condyle or coronoid okay so that kind of block will come when they put a new question or new picture uh, based question so uh, to avoid such things, uh, you know, you should always, whenever you are reading something, you should always imagine, okay, this, uh, when they're selling that, you should palpate for the coronary notch, you should rem remember or you should train your mind to, you know, visualize which is coronary notch. That will help you uh, to understand what kind of question they have asked or uh, if, there is, if there's a particular uh, question, uh, if there is a particular question which is asked uh, based on, I mean, based on the picture which is given, if you want to correlate uh, it, you should have an idea. Whenever you're reading, you should, uh, you know, train your mind to visualize it. Okay. So now I, I will just cut this thing and I'll just, uh, you know, cut the question and I will simplify the question. Okay. Now the, the question is the area where, where they have asked is an area in the condyle. Okay. And this area is particularly um, area very close to the pterygoid foveae where the latter pterygoid muscle is attached. Okay. So basically a injection in the condylar uh, region, pterygoid foveae region. So uh, the injection at that height is only a Gauguet's injection. So uh, most of you might uh, have done it. Some of you might not have given such injections. So I will just uh, tell you an easier way to study. So now there is a uh, mandibular foramen. This is the inner aspect of the mandible. So now you have a. So now you have a uh, nerve, which. So what is this nerve known as? Anyone? Can you name this nerve? What is this nerve which goes inside? Yeah. So uh, this is uh, the mandibular nerve. This is what I've drawn in thick one is the posterior trunk of mandibular nerve. And there is a uh, posterior larger division and there is an anterior smaller division. You might uh, remember that. There is a lingual nerve which uh, goes somewhere like which is which is a smaller nerve which goes somewhere like this very near to a third molar and it comes down here and it loops around the uh, your uh, loops around your wartens duct okay so that is your lingual nerve that is a branch of your the lingual nerve is a branch of posterior larger division the anterior smaller division it 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 is it will be somewhere here it gives uh, branches to the muscles uh, and there is a branch which loops down and comes onto the buccal aspect like this that is your buccal branch so we will talk about the anterior branch later okay so now this is the this is the uh, mandibular posterior division so i will mark certain points now there is a red point which i have marked so that is the area or the target area which we have which they have asked in the question so that is the area where you give Gauguet's injection. Okay, I think Anagha has answered it. You're right. It is Gauguet's injection. Now, what about this area? And what about this green colored area? So, can you tell me which injection is given in the mid ramus? Yes, which is given in the mid ramus? Blue colored. Can you tell me which injection?
yes so a uh, few of you know this few of you don't know this so uh, understand this point uh, your wasirani akinosi is given in that blue color region your ianb inferior alveolar nerve block is given in that green colored area so what point i wanted to teach was the height of injection the first one is dog gates so the height of injection is at the level of uh, your uh, your condyle okay second one is in the mid ramble region that is your wasirani akinosi and the third one is inferior alveolar nerve block that is a point just before the nerve enters the mandibular foramen okay so understand this so any picture based question if they are asking regarding the position or uh, if you are if they are asking regarding uh, which uh, nerve block targets a uh, larger nerve trunk among these three can you tell me which nerve block targets a larger nerve trunk gau gates because you know what, what actually happens in gau gates the lingual uh, the man, the mandibular posterior division the orico temporal nerve all these things are blocked in gau gates okay so the before that division takes place the uh, gau gate injection is given now what about wasirani akinosi the lingual is covered the lingual is very near to uh, that region it it's not this separate as i have drawn in this picture and there is one more nerve which is anesthetized in wasirani akinosi you know what that is anyone knows uh, this uh, nerve which i am going to draw here so i am drawing in a contrasting color anyone knows that nerve no hypo is a different nerve altogether hypoglossal nerve is a different nerve not related to mandibular nerve it is mylohyoid branch lingual is anterior swarup lingual i have already drawn as uh, yellow color the mylohyoid nerve is splitting just before the inferior alveolar nerve enters into the foramen and it goes below the uh, below below the mylohyoid ridge which is uh, you can see the ridge there so the mylohyoid nerve all is blocked in wasirani akinosis so uh, when it is gau gates the nerve trunk will be more bigger because the branches there, there are only few branching which is taking place there when it comes to wasirani akinosis it is it will be slightly more bigger when it comes to imb block nerve will be still smaller okay there is comparative charting okay between these three so this one question you should cover all these aspects and all those nerve block all okay so this, this is how uh, is coming from the uh, uh, la or you know injection aspect and also you can um, study about the uh, any adverse reactions of la you can read about the uh, the the volume of uh, local anesthetic material you use uh, for injection or, or all those uh, you know value based questions which comes from the uh, the nerve blocks uh, side all these things should be clubbed together and studied any time you are getting or reading a question you should recollect all these things that's how you revise okay don't you know i have seen a lot of students they revise by making new notes they revise by reading no you don't revise by reading you revise by recollecting okay you do questions try to recollect as much as points as possible after that you can just refer the question textbook or refer your notes and you can find out which all points you had missed okay so there is no point in reading and reading and reading you should read recollect then read recollect that's how you should do it okay so i think those are the only few uh, questions which i wanted to discuss so my discuss understand that is i wanted you to um, you know uh, find a way or you know my, uh, you i wanted you to uh, utilize this uh, message which i was trying to convey that you should try to incorporate because you should try to incorporate other questions other important points don't just study one question okay studying one question uh, should be in such a way that you cover all the 10 related questions which comes from that particular region 
Okay, so that's how you should be uh, reading and in OMFS, understand the procedures. Without understanding procedures, if they say a particular name of procedure, you should at least know this is done for this, this, this thing. Okay, don't ever mug up because at the end of the session, when you go to the exam, it is going to create a lot of confusion for you. So when you know a bit of what is being happening or what is uh, what you're doing, uh, or what the, the procedure is like I've shown you talk crunch and I've shown the picture in which the talk crunch is being actually used to pull the uh, used to uh, drive the uh, implant inside. So similarly, you should have some idea of what is being portrayed. Okay, that will help you a lot. Okay, so with that, I'm just concluding this short session. So any anything you want to ask? No, this is not a question. Uh, for, uh, not, not a uh, session for you to learn the particular three questions which I've given. No, that question and all you can learn. You should find a way to, you know, I'm trying to formulate your pattern of study. So understand how you should develop your pattern of study and the mistakes which many people make is they don't have a definite pattern. Okay, your pattern, if it is good, you should be able to recollect properly. If you're not able to recollect properly, the pattern of study is wrong. So identify your um, shortcomings, and then you should reformulate, remodulate your um, pattern of study. So that's how the entrance curriculum goes. Okay. So with that, I'm concluding my session. Anything anyone wants or any doubt is there, uh, you want to type, just type in the chat box.